Hi again. C17 introduced a curious new utility, STD Lander. Let's take a look what it can do for you. STD Lander seems odd at first glance. You call it with a pointer to some arbitrary object and you get the same pointer back. The obvious question is why? Why is it there in the first place? Let's take a look at a specific problem, recreating objects. What I have here is a compiler explorer launched in my browser, not my usual Visual Studio, simply because Visual Studio doesn't have STD Lander yet. Let's suppose we have a very simple class. Let's call it, eh, no, let's call it widget, widget. And inside this struct slash class, Let's introduce two members, a simple int i and a const int j. All right, now let's create an instance of our widget. I will use manual memory management just for the sake of clarity, but we all know this is bad. You should always use automatic memory management. Take a look at my other videos about it. All right, let's see auto w equals new widget and let's initialize it with two variables well two, two values sorry and of course we have to delete it afterwards cool okay nothing fancy there simple as that let's now for example print out the value of i don't know j Again, nothing fancy, as you can see it compiles, you can even see this assembly if you're into that kind of stuff. And now let's do something strange, ah, maybe not strange, let's do something unorthodox. We have our widget, which is initialized, now let's reinitialize it, which means using placement new operator. like this space here and let's reinitialize it with new values three and four whoa sorry didn't want to say that <laughs> id habit now you can well i hope you can feel that something is a bit off here we have a non-const int member and a const int member and we are recreating them both, well, reinitializing the, them both by recreating, recreating the widget object. So you might be already wondering if that's actually okay to do. You can recreate objects, no problem. But then you will run into problems with const members. The, the standard actually tells you that you cannot access const members after recreation. And why is that? The compiler sees that it's a const value and might do all kinds of optimizations to leverage that constness. The next time you try to access it, you'll get, well, undefined behavior. That's pretty much what the standard requires. It might work, it might not. We don't know. We should never experiment with undefined behavior and hope that we're lucky. Actually, let's add a compiler option and see what the disassembly looks like with optimizations. Let's add some optimization here and see what this line is. And this line actually will work in this particular case as expected because the compiler here already assumes that there is a 4 to be written out. So it simply pushes 4 to the standard output. If we change it to, for example, 7, you will see that this was changed to 7. But in general, doing that kind of access to const members which were reinitialized is an undefined behavior. So the natural question is how to access such members? Well, to make it work, you need to trick the compiler to bypass its optimizations. And that is exactly what STD Lander does. Remember, STD Lander simply takes a pointer to some memory and returns it. That's it. 
No strange logic, no magic inside. But that one single call breaks the optimization chain. The compiler doesn't know that the resulting pointer is the same that the one you passed into std lounder. So it really cannot apply any optimizations. Let's take a look at our example line here. How would we make it actually work every time? And you might hear my cat making some strange noises. Yeah, she wants to play. Later, later. <laughs> later I'll play a bit with my cat, but for now let's finish up with std lander. To make that work without relying on lucky compiler code generation, we should output what std lander returns. Ah, and in that case we of course need to enable C++17. Much better. So let's take a look at this line here. We are passing the address of our const member, j, into std lander. std lander simply returns that address. We are dereferencing it, so we are pretty much outputting the value of j inside our w object. If you see at the resulting code here, well, that actually didn't change much. You can see the 7 is here. And that's simply because GCC is, well, smart enough to make it work. But in general, if we turn the optimizations off, oh, you will see very much a call to std lounder, memory the reference, and outputting what std lounder returns, which is our J member. By using lambda and laundering the memory, the compiler properly accesses the recreated part of the memory occupied by J. And the result is our new value. This is the only way, well, at least now, to move our, around const optimizations, which would normally result in undefined behavior, which in turn means that it might work for you or it might not. Nobody knows, you shouldn't rely on undefined behavior. Of course, there are more exotic, let's call it like that, use cases for lambda. What might be, for example, creating objects inside the pre-allocated storage? You have some rules describing how this should work or not work. In some cases, you need to use also std lambda. There are, well, probably other use cases more exotic than those ones, but I don't really want to delve into them since you'll most likely never stumble upon one and it will just blur the picture for now. In short, remember, when using placement new, because this is probably the most common use case you will use std lander if ever, take a moment to consider if you'll be hit by such undefined behaviors and if you should really use std lander or not. At this point, if you are doing stuff like this, I think you will pretty much know or at least feel that something is wrong and you need to do something. I hope I explain a bit what this strange new thing of std lander is. I hope you found it informative. So give it a thumbs up, subscribe and see you in the next one.